Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Monday, January the 4th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I have said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Our Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapter 63, beginning in verse 15 through 65, 7. Look down from heaven and see from your holy and beautiful habitation. Where are your zeal and your might? The stirring of your inner parts and your compassion are held back from me. For you are our father, though Abraham does not know us, and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer from of old is your name. O Lord, why do you make us wander from your ways, and harden our heart, so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Your holy people held possession for a little while. Our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. We have become like those over whom you have never ruled, like those who are not called by your name. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old no one is heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned, in our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness, Zion has become a wilderness, Jerusalem a je desolation. Our holy and beautiful house, where our fathers praised you, has been burned by fire, and all our pleasant places have become ruins. Will you restrain yourself at the, all these things, O Lord? Will you keep silent and afflict us so terribly? I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, Here am I, here am I, to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and making offerings on bricks, who sit in tombs and spend the night in secret places who eat pig's flesh and broth of tainted meat is in their vessels, who say, Keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their bosom both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together, says the Lord, because they made offerings on the mountains and insulted me on the hills. I will measure into their bosom payment for their former deeds. Our writing today is by Martin Luther from a little book he wrote called A Simple Way to Pray, which he wrote for 
uh, his barber when his barber asked him, you know, Dr. Luther, can you teach us, uh, teach me how to pray? And Luther said, sure. He wrote this little book called A Simple Way to Pray, which is anything, when you first look at it, anything but simple. Uh, but it really is. And it's kind of how uh, all of our devotions are somewhat modeled. He talks about, very quickly, he talks about basically praying through the catechism. And to Luther, the catechism is not the part he wrote. It's the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and the Apostles' Creed. So you kind of see that model in our morning and evening prayer. And what he said is, you know, you go in your room, you shut the door. You start by, you know, going through the Ten Commandments, reciting them in your head. And then you go through the Creed, and you go through the Lord's Prayer, and then you go to work. And what he said was, okay, that seems like a lot, but when your conscience stops at something that's bothering you, like you get to a commandment, oh, you know, don't bear false witness against my neighbor. Oh, I gossiped about Johan yesterday. When your conscience stops you and you dwell on that and you go, okay, I need to repent for that. Then just stop, say amen and go to work. That, that was the point he was making was you go through this recitation, not for the sake of going through a ritual, but going through and finding something uh, for which you really need to bring to God in prayer, something that uh, you need help with, uh, something you require forgiveness for, uh, something of that nature. So it's not just uh, rattling off all these things like, like beads on a rosary. It is uh, simply a way to kind of get your prayer motor started. Uh, so that's enough about that because we can talk about it uh, for like an hour easily. But it is a tiny little book, uh, maybe 20 pages long. And this is what he says. When I feel that I have become cool and joyless in prayer because of other tasks or thoughts, for the flesh and the devil always impede and obstruct prayer, I take my little psalter, hurry to my room, or if it be the day and hour for it, to the church where a congregation is assembled, and as time permits, I say quietly to myself and word for word the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and if I have time, some words of Christ or of Paul, or some psalms, just as a child might do. It is a good thing to let prayer be the first business of the morning and the last at night. Guard yourself carefully against those false, deluding ideas which tell you, wait a little while, I will pray in an hour, first I must attend to this or that. Such thoughts get you away from prayer into other affairs which so hold your attention and involve you that nothing comes of prayer for that day. Finally, mark this, that you must always speak the Amen firmly. Never doubt that God in his mercy will surely hear you and say yes to your prayers. Never think that you are kneeling or standing alone. Rather, think that the whole of Christendom, all devout Christians, are standing there beside you, and you are standing among them in a common united petition, which God cannot disdain. Do not leave your prayer without having said or thought, Very well, God has heard my prayer. This I know is a certainty and a truth. That is what Amen means. And having read that, we now say together the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as always on Monday, our prayer is for the church herself. O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore we pray you, give an increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sin and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers, bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul, 
Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church and the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy, give bodily and spiritually, according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels, and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.